What yeah. has been front of your mind recently when it comes to compression? What ahas, what revelations have you been having? Ooh, with compression, maybe more on the master comp mix bus compression. I think that's been something I've been realizing that I'm not a, the biggest fan in the world of my compression on my mix bus. I've been actually having a lot of trouble as of recently. I don't know if my ear has gotten more sensitive to mix bus compression. As of lately, what I've been doing is I've been putting on, for instance, I have the Shadow Hills mastering compressor. I've literally been putting that thing on, not compressing anything. Literally, maybe it might move like just a tad here and there. I like it for the harmonics that it adds. Once again, I'm coming back to using harmonics in <laughs> saturation instead to give me my desired effects. I've been moving away from my compressor compression on my mask, my mix bus, which has been interesting. And I think it's because I've been adding so much saturation that I'm already in a place where that move is starting to sit back now. You know what I mean? I haven't been doing it. So when it's coming to compression, I'm starting to, like you said, you're compressing less. You're noticing, like I'm starting to compress less, which is great for dynamics. So I think that's been my big aha moment with compression is that the saturation that I'm gaining is a form of compression. You know what I mean? And now I'm using that form of compression to not give me such obvious styles of compression and stuff like that. So yeah. I've been lowering my ratios, one to, one to sevens now. I've been on one to seven ratios and stuff like that when it comes to certain things and things of that nature. And just I've just been using saturation as compression a lot more lately. So that's been my biggest new, huh, I don't like my stereo bus compressing like today. And I'm just like, turn it off. I'm like, that feels more open. I'm leaving it alone. You know what I mean? That's been happening lately a lot, a lot, which is yeah. scaring me because, you know, I have a big, an expensive compressor here and I haven't been using it. You'll sell it all too. <laughs> exactly. It, you got me thinking, I was like, huh, I haven't been using that. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, no, it's interesting. I think Jake, one of the instructors in our program, he's on the same uh, plane as you, man. He uses, mm. he if he's taming dynamics, he's using limiters and clippers. Wow. Right. Almost exclusively. For him, compression is only pulled out when you really need a very nuanced thing to happen because then you have control right. over a lot more knobs and different things or right. for character. Yeah, like I've been using for my Shadow Hill, just color. Yeah, yeah I, I use do. the same plugin and I very, and I, you maybe kiss it a little bit and, and I'm yeah. talking about mastering, right? Yeah, just a, t just, a, just a little. I've been doing that, like just a little bit. And then I've been like, okay, I'm cool. Barely compression. But limiters and clippers are much more effective if you just want to tame transients yeah. and clamp down. Yeah. It's easier to get to. It's quicker to get to. It's like usually one or two knobs on a compressor, or sorry, yeah. on a limiter or a clipper. And then the other the compressors have a lot more features, so save those for when it's nuanced. But yeah, I totally agree. It's yeah. it's interesting. Compression, yeah. especially with, as we said, saturation becoming more prevalent and better analog saturation, doing the yeah. compression, because it is comp like they're comp it's compressing. A yeah. lot of those tape I emulations and saturators, yeah. they're compressing. Yeah. And it's using it as a compressor and it's using it for color and it's using it in the same way we'd want to use a compressor anyway. It's just doing it more naturally sounding or something like that. Yeah. It's like this. the compression from the saturation is more engaging with the actual material like it, every piece that every sound source that comes into that saturation it reacts different and it surprises me sometimes i'm like oh wow it tamed the highs and it smoothed out the the mid-range and, and stuff like that that's multi if i think about multi-band compression then yeah i'll be honest with you i've been also moving over to the multi-band as like my final stage in my compression when it comes to certain instruments or sound sources a lot lately because I've been realizing that I'm using the multiband compressor to really shape the tone, right? Where I'm like, okay, this vocal, I love how it sounds, but something's sticking out. And instead of going for an, a, compress a compressor to compress the entire thing, I've been like, oh, it's just this range in the particular sound source that I want to tame. So I've been doing that. I'm not going to lie. That has been a game changer for me as well that I've been doing a lot where I'm like, oh, I'm making more nuanced decisions that are really working and retaining those dynamics in my sound sources and stuff like that. So I've been really, I've been having a lot of fun with multiband compression as well, because I'm doing less compression and more focusing on areas and problem spots. Got and it. that's been big for me right now. That's been really big too, compression wise. Do you find yourself mostly using it on vocal multiband or <laughs> using it on other stuff as well? I use it on other stuff as well. Like for instance, if I have, if I have a guitar that the low, like the low mids or the mids of the guitar sound great, 
but it's just that top end is a little too scratchy for me, then I'll probably go up with the multiband and say, okay, just tame some of the high end information on this guitar and just tame that. But I love how the low mids sound warm and full and stuff like that. So I've been using it on, a, on pretty much anything as far as grabbing problem spots in those particular sound source frequency ranges and stuff like that. So everything. So what is it that you're noticing when you reach for a multiband? What is it you're hearing? And what's the why behind the using that there? I know you've talked about that just a little bit here, but go a little right. deeper on that. What is it that you're really trying to do? When it comes to the multiband compressor, what I'm really looking is to shake the sound, right? Because I, chances are I already what's coming in. And there are a lot of things that I love, and there just happens to be something that I don't love. So that's how I say, oh, I need a multiband. Because if I, for instance, let's think about a vocal, very common. If I listen to a vocal and I'm like, dude, the high end on this sounds so good. And I'm like, it sounds great. If I reach for a compressor, it's going to compress the entire thing. I'm gonna alter the entire sound of the entire thing. The highs might start to sound tight or my mid range might not sound as free and open. What I'll do is I'll say, I love this range of the vocal, but I don't like this range of the vocal. And I'll listen close, I'll solo certain ranges and go, that's the range that's poking out, that's giving me that 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 sound that I'm really trying to get rid of. So it's really about, in the way I'm going about saying I need multiband, is when I like something and I don't like something within the entire sound source that I'm actually grabbing. So a lot of times in that 200 hertz range of the vocal, I'll feel like I'm getting a little wolfiness. And if I take a full compressor, I'm gonna alter the whole sound. But if I'm just saying, yo, I really don't like the wolfiness in that vocal, then now I got a multiband and I just two dB, just a little bit right there and I tame it. If I went to a full compressor that's doing the whole thing, I might need six dB to even get to that wolfiness to get control because it's grabbing everything at that volume. So now, it's like I'm doing less and getting more out of the tone and, and shape of the vocal without destroying so much of what is already there. So that's been my process now as of lately. I think that's really interesting. I think that's a unique perspective even on multiband mm. in a way because I think a lot of times when I'm reaching for a multiband and I will use it on a vocal, for example, I'm doing mm. it because of just the dynamic nature of vocals and that they're all over the frequency spectrum as they change right. notes. And so I'm thinking more along the lines of if there's a certain note that they hit where 200 is just too much, but the rest of the time I want the 200 in there, right. then the multiband's a great choice because it's just going to take it out when they go down to that note and right. leave it alone the rest of the time. But you're talking about something a little bit different, which is like uh -huh. instead of reaching for a compressor uh -huh. to clamp down on certain things or even an EQ that's mm -hmm. not dynamic to clamp right. down on something, you're saying yeah. I'm shaping sound the least less destructive way yeah for why me, just attacking problems for me they're problems, the permanence problems. for me they're the permanence of the eq move or compression which will clamp down on maybe more than you are bargaining for yeah for sure and the beautiful thing about the multiband is if i clamp down on that 200 hertz range and i bring it down to db i've probably gained a little bit of headroom so then i can go to the overall and boost the vocal a little more. And now I'm getting an even cleaner sound, but even stronger mid-range highs and things of that nature. So once again, the game of inches that we're playing as far as gaining headroom. It's, oh, I gained 2 dB headroom. Give that vocal some more power. Boom. Now it's, this is where my brain is going. I'm just playing a game of inches every time I mix, every time I master. I'm just like playing the game. Like where can I gain some more headroom? Where can I get some more headroom from and stuff like that? Yeah, no, you're right on. I think a lot of people think that it's compressors and limiters that give you that loud sound. Right. It's not. Nah, it's, it's it, not it's at getting, all. It's making space, man. It's a yeah. lot of micro moves that you save headroom here, you save headroom there, right. you save headroom with a saturator, you're doing the right, right EQ move so it's really balanced. It's actually more right. about EQ and saturation and all that other stuff than compression or limiting to actually get yep. that loud sound that people are looking for. But people, I don't know that they're always thinking that yeah. way. Yeah, and I think about it, it's okay, I'm just gonna do, get it to where it is and then I'm gonna crush it with a limiter and clipper. I know that, cause I've been there. I've been like, okay, my limiter and clipper is just gonna do the job. I know that's gonna get me loud, but now, Man, I've been like, listen, looking at my mix lofts, I'm like, whoa, I didn't put a limiter on yet, but this thing is already like pretty loud. So 
yeah, man, game of inches. Like just getting a game of inches, retaining my transients. That's also been a big thing for me now is making those, making sure my transients are there. That's really big for me right now. Cause that's what, to me, that's the life of the record. That's where it things feel alive is when I'm retaining those transients and making sure those transients have those moments and stuff like that. Not, I've been noticing that a lot too. Not clamping too much. Yeah, yeah, just controlling and making sure they're actually, that those transients are far enough away from some other information so that it's just hitting my transients when I hit like certain thresholds and limiters and stuff like that. I'm like, I just want the transients to get in there. I don't want it to catch some other stuff. Sometimes it, for that's a case by case scenario. Sometimes certain stuff is just gonna get caught up there, but I've been noticing that too. I've been trying to play that game where it's, okay, let me push this a little bit more, bring the volume down in it, but then the kick and snare and all our transient stuff, that's the only thing that's really like transient. Like when I look at that waveform, it's okay, those are all my kicks and snares. Cool, right there, my hi-hats and things of that nature. So I've been playing I've been playing a lot of different games lately. I'm not gonna lie to you with Fun. stuff. I've been playing a lot of stuff. Yeah. Those limiters and clippers, they do a great job of, of retaining the transient or at least making it feel like it's retaining the transient while also saving headroom in a more transparent way than a lot of compression Boy. will do. For sure. My, my go-to clipper right now is the Sir Audio Tools standard clip. That it's a little, it's a $25 clipper, but let, this thing is worth more. I'm, I hope they don't hear this, but it's worth way more than that. Like <laughs> it's good. Like that clipper is awesome. Yeah. We use the Ven Audio free clip, which is free, which we really love. Oh. I'll check it out. Look, I'm a, I will, especially something free. I'll try it out. Like yeah. I'll try that out. You said, what is it called? The Vin Audio Free Clip? Free Clip. A great name for a free clipper, right? I think so. <laughs> free Clip. Free Clip. Yeah, okay. check it out. We re we've been really loving that one. What was the name of yours again? I want to check it out. Oh, Sir Audio Tools. It's called Standard Clip. Standard Clip. Got it. Yeah, Standard Clip. That And it's so simple. You throw it in Soft Clip Pro Mode and it is over. That thing is retain so much of the transient information while chopping it down and everything. It's really powerful. Love that. Thanks for watching this clip from the Reverse Engineer podcast. If you want to watch the whole podcast, just click right here. It will take you to the full version, or you can listen to it wherever you listen to your podcasts. Also, if you have any questions about mastering.com, just go ahead and search mastering.com. You can learn all about what we do over there. Thanks again for listening.